This episode brought to you by PatrioticLegacy.com. Patriot's choice for emergency preparedness, survival gear, and everyday carry. PatrioticLegacy.com was nice enough to send me over one of these units so I could give you an honest review. I love this tactical flashlight. It's got everything you would ever need. Six overall lighting functions, escape features like the window hammer and the seatbelt cutter, solar charging so you don't need batteries, a power bank for charging your phone and other devices, and a removable compass with access to a personal safety alarm. Patriot Legacy supports veterans and YouTubers like yours truly. So head on over there and make sure to use the promo code DRONE20 to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. Some of the things they said were really blasphemous. They know he's a moron. They know he's corrupt. They know that his behavior is just a classic scumbag. In a moment where we have a part of one of our major political parties that is is just not accepting the premise It was gut-wrenching, but I managed to sit through the entire first part of these sham-peachment hearings against President Trump. It was a non-stop Democrat cringe fest with countless examples of why this entire thing is a sham. Not just from Democrats, but from their sycophantic media who, I kid you not, were gushing over Ambassador Taylor's voice and how they all think it sounds like Walter Cronkite. I haven't spent a lot of time talking about impeachment, and I don't want to spend much time on this because I know it's just going to be an afterthought in a couple weeks. So I'm going to quickly go through what I thought were the most jaw-dropping and eye-opening moments during the hearings. I gotta, and I'll, I'll allow the question, but um, are you are asking, you really, are you, are you, parliamentary inquiry, are you seriously interrupting our time no, I, here? I will allow the question. I won't, I won't dock this from the time. Um, I just want to be clear, Ambassador, if you're able to verify the things that counsel has asked you and the prerequisite of the question, that's fine. Otherwise, in questions from the majority or the minority that may assume facts not in evidence before you, uh, you should be cautioned about that. I sat here through the first 45 minutes and literally had an objection to almost the foundation of every question that Mr. Goldman asked regarding facts not in evidence, leading. But House Resolution 660 does not say that we, under, we are under the federal rules of evidence. If it is your position that I should be asserting objections to questions that violate the federal rules of evidence, let me know now, because this hearing is going to change significantly. To answer Mr. Ratcliffe's question, I have answered it. You may no, resume your question. Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, um, you haven't answered my question whether or not I should be asserting assumes facts not in evidence or leading uh, objections to questions that are posed from this point forward. That's my question. Mr. Ratcliffe, I'll say once again, I'm not objecting to the question, but I am instructing the witness that they should not presume questions from the majority or the minority <laughs> that may represent facts not at evidence uh, are correct. Um, this is, I have, I have uh, answered your question. We will resume the questioning and resume the clock. Schiff and other Democrats got plenty of time to ask their star witness plenty of leading questions that lacked evidence, and Republicans sat quietly, respecting what they thought were the ground rules. However, when Republicans started asking the witnesses questions, Schiff interjected and advised the witnesses not to answer them, claiming that they lacked evidence. The Democrats are clearly desperate and they're playing dirty. You can just tell by looking at their rallies. While Democrats have trouble filling small rooms, Trump's filling entire stadiums. Schiff is basically just poisoning the well here and framing Republican questions as conspiracy theories, which works right in line with the media narrative. It's another great example of the Democrats and the media coordinating on strategies. In any case, you'll notice Schiff never answered the question about what the ground rules were. Most likely so Schiff can change them on the fly when it's convenient. Ambassador, you weren't on the call, were you? The president, you didn't listen on President Trump's call and President Lindsey's call? I did not. You've never talked with Chief of Staff Mulvaney? I never did. You never met the president? That's correct. You had three meetings again with Zelensky and it didn't come up. And two of those they had never heard about as far as I know. And so there was Lisky, no reason for and it. President Zelensky never made an announcement. This, this is what I can't believe. And you're their star witness.
During Taylor's previous deposition, he made the claim that he had a, quote, clear understanding that Ukrainians wouldn't be getting aid until Zelensky made a public announcement of investigations. Jordan then points out the glaringly obvious fact the aid was never held up for such requirements. This is their star witness, folks. A guy who is recounting tall tales from second, third, and maybe even fourth-hand sources. That hearing was the pitiful finale of a three-year-long operation by the Democrats, the corrupt media, and partisan bureaucrats to overturn the results of the 2016 election. After the spectacular implosion of their Russia hoax on July 24th, in which they spent years denouncing any Republican who ever shook hands with a Russian. On July 25th, they turned on a dime and now claim the real malfeasance is Republicans' dealings with Ukraine. But anyone familiar with the Democrats' scorched earth war against President Trump would not be surprised to see all the typical signs that this is a carefully orchestrated media smear campaign. Though executive branch employees are charged with implementing the policies set by our president, who is elected and responsible to the American people, elements of the civil service have decided that they, not the president, are really in charge. Despite all their dissatisfaction with President Trump's Ukraine policy, the president approved the supply of weapons to Ukraine. Unlike the previous administration, which provided blankets, as defense against invading Russians. Spectacle is doing great damage to our country. It's nothing more than an impeachment process in search of a crime. Literally, as soon as the Russian collusion conspiracy theory died, Democrats and their media began pushing this latest attempt to undo a Democratic election. Since Trump immediately released the transcript of the phone call, Democrats and their media were caught off guard. Schiff attempted to fix this problem by literally making up a fictitious version of the phone call. He purposely put out a version of events that wasn't true, knowing that people who were watching would walk away and remember his version of events. A classic drive-by media tactic. Quotes Ukrainian parliamentarian Andrei Artemenko saying, quote, It was clear they were supporting Hillary Clinton's candidacy. They did everything from organizing meetings with the Clinton team to publicly supporting her to criticizing Trump. I think that they simply did didn't meet with the Trump campaign because they thought Hillary would win. Ambassador Taylor, you testified you were unfamiliar with that statement. Correct. You did not know that Sergei Lyshenko, then a Ukrainian parliamentarian, had admitted that part of his motivation in spreading information about the so-called Black Ledger, a disputed document purporting to reveal corruption by a former Trump campaign official, was to undermine the Trump's candidacy. This was in your deposition. Is that still correct? That is still correct, sir. Ambassador Taylor, in your testimony of this committee, you said you were never briefed on these reports and statements, uh, that you did not do due diligence before taking your post to discover that President, the President's and Mayor Giuliani's concerns may have been, and that you did what they may have been, and that you did not discuss them with Ambassador Yovanovitch. That's still correct? Yes, sir. Furthermore, you said it upset you to hear about the many indications of Ukrainian election meddling. The main reason that Trump was concerned with CrowdStrike and that DNC server is because it connects to the larger problem of Ukrainian corruption. When confronted with the fact that Ukrainians have admitted to digging up dirt on Trump to meddle in US elections, Ambassador Taylor excused it, saying that Trump had once mentioned letting Russia keep Crimea as the reason why. I looked into the circumstances for several of the things that you just uh, mentioned. Um, in 2016, uh, candidate Trump had made a statement um, saying that it was possible that uh, he would allow Crimea to go back to Russia. Are you aware uh, during the I believe it was the 2012 uh, election when, uh, at the time, President Obama leaned over on a hot mic to the then Russian president and said that he'd have to wait till after the election. Uh, did that, was that inflammatory to the Ukrainians also? I don't know, sir. 
Exactly. Starting in 2016, the narrative began that Russia is some horrible threat. Yet, somehow, it was never a controversy when Obama was caught on a hot mic telling Russia that after the election, he would have more flexibility. What did he mean by that, and why didn't it upset Ukrainians at the time? Ambassador Taylor, a guy who has so much to say about events he took no part in and has no direct knowledge of, suddenly clams up and has nothing to say when the topic switches to Obama and Russia. Two years later, Russia moves into Ukraine without any response from Barack Obama and very little concern from the media. All throughout the hearings, Democrats and their witnesses lamented that held up aid would embolden Russia, bring harm to Ukrainians, and damage U.S. interests. Which is strange because, as I mentioned earlier, it wasn't a high priority for Obama, the Democrats, or the media when Russia invaded Ukraine. And our goal to continue to support sovereignty of nations. Meanwhile, Russia is violently attack attacking people in Ukraine in the Donbass area. So withholding military aid, does that weaken Ukraine? Does it embolden Russia when there was uh, no aid being sent to Ukraine? I must have passed through a wormhole and entered another dimension. Because where I come from, Obama let Russia roll right into Ukraine without doing anything. So everything you're hearing from the Democrats and their media about Trump emboldening Russia and endangering Ukrainian is just completely absurd. And make no mistake, the introduction of javelins into that war will change the dynamics completely. I'm not a military expert by any means, but I know that javelins are good at destroying armored vehicles. I also know that Russia is poor and probably can't afford to lose a bunch of APCs, tanks, and other vehicles. Well, that's about all I want to say about this train wreck. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. You might as well hit that bell icon while you're at it. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on Subscribestar, Patreon, or PayPal. You can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thank you.